How did you feel when you were performing the heart transplant for Albert? Well, we it was very interesting. I was just back, uh, just under two months from uh, UK, and uh, we had a donor call, and I was told that there was a potential donor in Ipoh. And I was really excited at the time. And uh, I remember running down to, uh, from, from the ICU to, to meet one of the fellow doctors and saying, look, we got a donor. And uh, all of us were excited. And, uh, you know, then I went, we basically at that time, or even now, we the team is divided to two. We, we have a procurement team that goes and uh, have a look at the potential donor, procure the heart and bring it back uh, to IGN. And then we have an implant team that does the transplantation. So I remember going there and uh, it was a young donor. Uh, I recall it was a national athlete, That's a state right. athlete. It was a state athlete. Uh, and I uh, knew that was a good heart and uh, Albert would be really very lucky to get uh, such a young donor with a good heart. And you know, anyway, we brought the heart back all the way from Ipo, escorted by the police, of course, and right. uh, did the implant, which was just under uh, just under four hours, which would be about the time that mm -hmm. uh, it's almost the maximum duration that we allowed. At any point during the procedure, did you feel that maybe there was a chance that something may go wrong? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, yeah. definitely, of course. Because it's it's a very complex procedure requiring four major areas of us having to suture the heart back into the the patient, right? So first of all, any of these areas could could leak, could bleed, you know, and more importantly, is you know the heart was stopped for almost four hours. So which means that this, although we have uh, solutions and chemicals that we use to protect the heart. But there's always that worry whether will the heart start back again. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the heart that's been in the with in ice, in ice for yeah. the last close to four hours, and uh, you know something that we were, of course, worried about. I guess that's anywhere in the world. When I was undergoing training, that was uh, also like that. And in fact, in Australia, it's even longer. Sometimes they harvest from New Zealand. Uh, for, you know, in the, the heart is for six hours. You mm -hmm. know. But uh, you know that's certainly something that we were very very worried about. But the minute the you know when we uh, initiated blood flow again to the heart, it started to beat, and everybody was like clapping and happy. And, you know what I mean? Like, right. yeah. You know. Doctor Izani, how important is a doctor-patient relationship when it comes to cases such as this? That's the key about uh, being a doctor. You you have to forge that, foster or foster that uh, relationship between a patient and you, and that element of trust that element of uh, comfort that you give to the patient uh, you know making sure that they are not just uh, uh, confident in what you're going to do but then they know that you're sincere in doing what you want to do and you want to, you want them to get better you know so that will give a lot of comfort to the patient you know it's that is something which is not easy to train you know you can't train somebody to to behave like that or to treat the patient like that so that comes with exposure experience and more importantly, you must be passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, you know, for the younger doctors, you know, it's it's not about like what you see in Grey Anatomy or one <laughs> of those dramas, right? It's you got to be passionate, you know, and uh, passionate about what you do and willing to get call at three in the morning or four in the morning for a mundane things that a patient is com complaining about. If and if you can't, you know, you can't accept that, then it's very difficult to continue as a doctor. At the moment, do you have numbers uh, with regards to you know, those waiting? If, if I remember right, there's about eight, eight of them waiting. Eight, yeah. okay. But there are actually more that are being assessed. Mm -hmm. But we're a bit stringent with those that are because a donor heart is a very um, valuable uh, item, basically. So you want it to enter the the, the person who's going to get the best possible benefit from it you know like Albert you know you put in in 21 years you're really happy you don't want to put mm -hmm. in one on a patient that will not last a year you know you know, for whatever mm -hmm. reasons so th there is a very stringent uh, selective uh, selection criteria that we have uh, not just about age but looking at all the other organs you know and potentially whether this uh, this patient will have complications after the procedures you know right. or high risk for complication right okay now.